and what you can uh, prove it uh, okay so that is denoted as the correlation coefficient of x and y and Yeah, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, very good morning. I think screen is also visible. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, uh, we have covered so far uh, very important uh, discrete random variables. And uh, we started with the Bernoulli. Then uh, we have seen uh, if you have, uh, uh, if you do Bernoulli trial n number of times, uh, that will be approximated by uh, binomial distribution, binomial random variable. And uh, so if you keep on doing, uh, keep on repeating the Bernoulli trial for large numbers, then we have another random variable known as boson random variable 
and uh, which can be and uh, which can be uh, seen also as an approximation of a good approximation of binomial random variable okay whenever certain conditions are satisfied okay and then at the end we have uh, defined a random variable which you are also aware already uh, regarding the geometric random variable so here the concept of geometric random variable is uh, you are keep on drawing the trial until you get the success okay so this is how this uh, uh, pro that geometric random variable is generated and uh, so then uh, the corresponding pmf also can be seen by this. okay so at ith number of toss you are getting the success so and rest i minus 1 i minus 1 time you are failing okay so 1 minus p is sitting here i minus 1 time so to the power i minus 1 and into p will be the straightforward probability mass function okay for i equals to 1 2 3 and so on and zero otherwise and we have also seen that this satisfies uh, the properties of uh, probability mass function that non negativity and normality condition okay right now that uh, the following uh, question is there so i think uh, we can uh, uh, do it uh, within a uh, i think uh, it will not take much time so you have an arm which contains n white and m black balls okay so you have an arm which contains n white and m black balls now balls are in randomly selected one at a time until a black one is obtained so you are selecting a uh, you are selecting uh, balls randomly one at a time and you are just picking and just okay and until a black one is obtained and how this drawn is happening is if we assume that each ball is selected is replaced before the next one is drawn means as a speaking up looking at the color and you are putting it back if it is not black okay before the next one is drawn so what is the probability that exactly n draws are needed so certainly i think uh, until you will uh, draw a black ball that is a problem that is a success so drawn black ball what will be the probability of success yes so total number of balls are m plus n out of them m are black ball so it's very obvious to see here the probability of success is p equals to m divided by m plus n the total number of favorable cases divided by total number of exhaustive cases okay now what you what you are interest in uh, what is the probability that exactly n draws we needed okay x equals to n means n minus 1 time you are failing and nth time you will be drawing the black ball okay so it's a uh, very simple what is the failing uh, probability is n so white ball m plus n to the power n minus 1 time m divided by m plus n so by following the geometric distribution that's, that's very simple pretty straightforward now similarly if you require at least k draws are needed okay means you are interested in uh, here in this b case you are interested is probability that x is greater than equals to k okay at least okay so at least k means you are at least means x greater than equals to k and which you can understand by 1 minus probability that x is less than k and now uh you know okay that is going to be a something like you will this m by m plus n will come out and rest of the thing will be a like geometric series with some uh, k minus 1 terms okay and that you know how to sum up the geometric series with some common ratio is known okay right so 
I think I have this here. So x greater than equals to k is uh, at least k is uh, uh, is uh, at least k drawn is required to get probability means k minus. Because what does that mean? Means k minus one failure. Okay, that also can be understood. So that you can also prove actually. Okay, that's a probability density for oh, sorry pro, uh, that cumulative distribution function for uh, this. Uh, 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 this geometric random variable, okay, that also can be seen from here, okay. So means uh, you can show uh, by uh, uh, following the property of geometric random variable that probability of x less than k is equals to one minus one minus p to the power k minus one, okay. So if it's less than k means is a uh, discrete one, so less than less than equals to k minus one. So one minus one minus p to the power k minus one. That's what, right? Okay. So that you can show by following the geometric that uh, geometric series. Okay. So do you have any doubt for this question? I think this is easy to follow. It's right, right? So I think it's very simple, right? Probability of uh, if I write here, so you have this is fx of uh, k. Let me do this is equals to probability at x less than equals to k, and that's equals to summation and uh, i equals to 1 to k, probability that x equals to i. And it's very simple. So probability of x equals to y, you can replace here. And then uh, you have this is summation i equals to 1 to k, p time 1 minus p to the power i minus 1. That's equals to p time summation i equals to 1 to k, 1 minus p to the power i minus 1. Right. So now it's a geometric series, right? Uh, with common ratio one minus p. So that's equals to. Now I can write this. Just a second. Uh, yeah. So this implies uh, f x of k is equals to. Uh, you have this is a p time. You have. Uh, yeah, one plus one minus p plus 1 minus p square plus and so on plus uh, 1 minus p to the power k minus 1. So this is geometric series like 1 plus r plus r square plus and so on plus r to the power k minus 1. So I think this is very simple p time 1 minus 1 minus p to the power k divide by 1 minus 1 minus p. It's very simple to follow. So this 1 minus 1 plus p is equals to this, and this is equals to 1 minus 1 minus p to the power k. Okay, so done, right? So this is the cumulative distribution function for geometric random variables. So from here, it is very easy to follow that probability of x greater than equals to k is nothing but 1 minus p to the power. So this is uh, so this is now straightforward. So I don't need to repeat it again, right? OK. So now the next question is, uh, what are the mean and variance of this random variable, this geometric random variable is? OK. So uh, this can be uh, shown now again by following the approach means like you you already know what is the sum of uh, uh, this uh, combination of arithmetic uh, series and geometric of x is equals to what summation x equals to 1 to infinity x times px of x okay now replace that probability of x equals to x is nothing but p time 1 minus p to the power x minus 1 it's a very straightforward now replacing now p is out 
and now you can see if you write it down what is this this is uh, one time one minus p to the power zero so one plus two time one minus p plus three time one minus p square plus four time one minus p cube and so on so this is a combination of arithmetic series as well as geometric series okay and how to handle this if you call this as s okay so how to handle this so this is you can handle by this so if this is your s you multiply it by 1 minus p both side and then subtract so you will get the i think this is this is the way you can uh, find out this s s value okay you need to you need to identify this s value okay so you multiply both side by 1 minus p and then these two things you should subtract okay and if you subtract p time s is equals to it will come out as 1 by p and this will give you s equals to 1 by p square so now if you replace here p time s is p 1 by p so that is what the final answer now if you recall what is variance of x if you recall this is going to be expectation of x square minus expectation of x whole square so it's enough to show if it, it is enough to find out the expectation of x square so again you have to follow the similar strategy here okay so expectation of x square is what summation x equals to 1 to infinity x square time pxx okay so x square time this and then you will have a again in the same same approach you can uh, you can uh, use and you can find out the sum okay so here is this and uh, this is going to be uh, you can uh, show that i think i have uh, this is a expectation of x is 1 by x okay 1 by p now okay so similarly you can identify now expectation of x square okay so expectation of x square is equals to summation x equals to 1 to infinity x square time px of x now this is equals to summation x equals to 1 to infinity x square time this px of x is again p time 1 minus p to the power x minus 1 and now this is going to be is equals to so p is out okay and now what you have is now if i uh, see this is uh, 1 plus 2 square 1 minus p plus 3 square 1 minus p square plus right uh, 4 square 1 minus p cube plus and so on okay so this you will again call as an s and again you will follow the similar type of strategy okay to find out the final sum okay and you can also then uh, then what should be the final answer you can find out from here so that's going to be 1 by p square minus 1 by so this is uh, if you if you open it up this is what what is this so 1 by p square and uh, minus 1 by p so whether it is relating somewhere so so do we have another way to find out so you can also uh, look at the uh, moment generating function of the geometric random variable if it is is so easy okay so in my opinion this is uh, expectation of x square minus expectation of x whole square okay so uh, what it will give you so you have 1 by p square here so you have uh, uh, okay so you have to show that uh, expectation of x square the final answer I think uh, expectation of x square will be is equals to uh, 2 by p square minus 1 by p. Okay, so that you have to show. So this sum should come out that, okay, final one.
okay so this final value uh, should come out as 2 divided by p square minus 1 by p. then your answer is okay try it out okay if it will not work okay let me know okay i will i will supply the notes okay in the later case okay right now let me uh, so now uh, we are done we are we have covered now almost all important uh, discrete random variables okay now we are moving forward to define the important continuous random variables okay so among which uh, i mean uh, this uniform random variable is already very much aware to you to all of you okay it has been identified in the tutorial sheet as well as i think somewhere i think in the previous lectures as well okay now what you can see is uh, means uh, you can uh, by following this diffin uh, so this is a one dimensional uniform random variable because you have only one random variable okay and why we are calling it as uniform that you will uh, see geometrically okay now the same definition can be extended to two random uh, the the uh, the two dimensional vector three dimensional vector and so on so i think uh, uh, it is very easy to follow this is a one dimensional x if you have only one random variable it's a one dimensional so if you take the pair x comma y so x and y two random variables is two dimensional vector okay similarly x comma y comma z is a three dimensional vector so three dimensional random uh, three 3d three random variable if you put in the pair that is known as three dimensional two dimensional and so on multi dimensional okay so we have talked about jointly so this is, so if you have you are talking about the so they are jointly means you are having you are you are, you are working with the pair x comma y okay we have done for the two case right two random variables those things can be extended to any number of random any finitely many number of random variables okay so we will see how this uniform random variable i means has nice properties when you go with the multi dimensional one okay try to learn that okay okay now uh it's very simple so this is uh fx of x if it is defined as this then we say x is a uniformly distributed random variable over the interval this close ab okay and we write x follows this now if you draw the picture of this okay so what or how does it looks like it's a line okay okay so it it draws a line i think this is here so this is if you have this is x you are taking this x over close interval ab and if you drawing this this uh, this is the uh, okay here is you have this y you can say and you have this fx of x what is the curve is nothing but this line y equals to 1 by b minus a and you can see the distance uh, in, uh, on any point on this okay so this is a, a one by u n s a if you look at the distance everywhere it is uniform okay now uh, this if you take any interval alpha to beta okay which is a subset of close interval ab you know how to identify the probability over this this interval okay that's going to be integration from alpha to beta fx of x dx okay that's very straightforward so for alpha beta subset of ab so this is going to be there so that's that's very straightforward so fx of x is 1 by b minus a whenever alpha beta is subset of ab so fx of x remain constant as 1 by b minus a and this is nothing but the length of this interval alpha to beta that is nothing but beta minus alpha by b minus a and it's very certain that when you have a subset alpha beta is a subset of ab so length of this interval is always less than equals to length of this interval so the division will be less than equals to 1 so this will ensure that you have the this is p actually identifies a probability over it 
Okay. Now, if uh, so, let's uh, let's fix one example. I think I don't know whether it is uh, done in your tutorial sheet or not. So far, I don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, read it and uh, let me know whether it, this problem is done. Whether it is in uh, no, sir. one of the tutorial sheet? No, sir. Okay, fine. Anyway, we'll try to understand now. So, buses arrive at a specified stop at 15 minutes interval starting at 7 a.m. That is, they arrive at, let's say, 7, 7.15, then 7.30 and so on at 15 minutes interval. Okay. Okay. Now, if a passenger arrives at the shop at a time that is uniformly distributed between 7 and 7.30. So, during that interval, so 7 to 7.30, that's a 30 minutes interval. That's a uniformly distributed. Find the probability that he waits. Okay. So, he waits less than 5 minutes for a bus. Or it at, he waits at least 12 minutes for a bus. So now, if I define x as the time in minutes past 7 a.m., so after 7 a.m. in minutes, that the passenger arrives at the shop. Okay, after 7, he arrives at the shop. What the time in minutes? Until 7 till 30. Okay, 7 to 7:30, we have to only miss. So then x will follow the uniform distribution over the interval 0 to 30. Now, if you look at the first problem, he should he, he, he should wait less than five minutes for a bus. So what is the interval time he should arrive? He is less than five minutes. So after seven, next bus is what? 7.15. So he should arrive between 10 to 15. So, right? So he should arrive between 10 to 15, 7.10 to 7.15. Then he will wait at less than five minutes or he should arrive between 7.25 to 7.30. Less than, strictly less than. Okay. Then, so these are the two events, okay, where it will fall. Okay. And both are mutually exclusive. Okay. So, this is going to be equals to probability that, so it's equals to probability that uh, you have 10 less than x less than 15 plus probability that 25 less than x less than 30. And this is equals to, so now, just now we have seen, that's 15 minus 10 divided by 30 plus 30, 30 minus 25 divided by 30. Beta minus alpha, if I refer, refer that exercise, just now we have done. Okay, so this is going to be, so it's going to be 5 by 30 plus 5 by 30, so it's going to be 10 by 30 and it's going to be 1 by 3. Now, if you look at this at least 12 minutes for a bus, he should wait at least 12 minutes for a bus. So, when he should arrive? So, only two buses are there at 7.15 and 7.30. So, when she, he should arrive is between 7 to 7.3 and 7.15 to 7.18. Right? These are the only two possibilities where if he arrives, he should wait at least 12 minutes for a bus. Okay. And you do again in a similar fashion. Okay. Then you can find the final answer. So 7 to 7, 3 and 7, 15 to 7, 18. So you have a 0 to 3x and 15 to 18x and you have the final answer. Only. Okay. Right now, uh, that's another uh, uh, exercise. This is an exercise. I think uh, this this also can be done easily. Okay, so uh, I I don't think so. I have to explain this. So you can do. Okay, you have a two minutes time. You can verify the following. Okay, 
so x follows the uniform distribution the mean is nothing but the mean of this a b a plus b by 2 and variance of x is b minus a whole square by 2 okay so you do verify so expectation of x mean is uh, already has been calculated for the variance of x you need to identify expectation of x square okay try it out okay try it out just now So you have to just replace here x square. That's that's it. So uh, what is the expectation of x square? Is I think uh, this is uh, here is x square. So x cube by three. So you have one upon b minus a times three x cube is so b cube minus a cube. So that's going to be now you know how to uh, b minus a into a square plus b square plus a b, right? A square plus b square plus a b divided by three, right? And now uh, you subtract with the uh, this uh, whole square. And then you verify that variance of x is b minus a whole square by two. Okay, so that you can do later on. Okay, right. So now, sorry, yes. Yeah. So I don't understand the last step you done that b cube minus a cube upon three upon b minus. I don't understand. No, what is x x square integration? If you don't, uh, I don't know means whether you have pick up the pen and paper or not. I don't know means like uh, see, I have asked you to solve out, right? If you uh, if you only follow here, it will be very difficult. Okay, okay. I get it. I get okay, it. so x square integration is x cube by three, so upper limit minus lower limit. Okay, it's a very simple exercise. Okay. Now uh, this next example is as follows: the current in a semiconductor diode is often measured by the Shockley equation. So the following is the Shockley equation, okay, which I don't want to worry about to define it, okay. So where this individual and uh, uh, the thing, uh, the notations are defined as follows. So V is denotes the voltage across the diode. I naught is the reverse current, A is a constant, and I is the resulting diode current. So you are in the ICT, so you, you may very well understand this, all the things. Okay. Now, what is addition? So this is Shockley equation. So what is additionally given to you is that expect if you have to find expectation of I. So you have been given with A value, I naught value. And you have been given that V follows the uniform distribution over the interval 1 to A. Okay, so I note is constant, A is constant, but it's a function of V. Okay, so V is a random variable, so it, this complete will identify a random variable. Okay, so this expectation of I is nothing but expectation of this. Okay, and you have to fix all the things. So expect so I is nothing but G of V, and with a where I note value you can put 10 to the power minus 6. A value is 5. Okay. So expectation of Y is equals to integration minus F to infinity G of V F V of V. So now F V of V is what? 1 upon 3 minus 1. 
and it is only non zero between the interval 1 2 3 3 so what will be the final here is integration 1 2 3. okay so 10 to the power minus 6 time e to the power 5 v minus 1 divide by 3 minus 1 that is 2 dv and now you know how to integrate this e to the power 5 v and you put upper limit minus lower limit okay so that will give you the final answer here okay right okay so you can also verify that the final answer is 0.3269 now why are we not multiplying by v to find the expectations where can you go through previous slide here like why are we not multiplying by v See, if you if you recall the previous uh, lectures uh, what is the expectation of g of x if x is a random variable is going to be for the continuous case is integration minus infinity to infinity g of x time fx of x dx then what is f v here f of x here huh? what is f of x here in this case fx is a uh, fx is a pdf for x random variable so here is fv is a uh, uh, fv is a pdf for v random variable and did you miss the class i don't know we have done yes, it long sir. back yes sir i got it are uh, you uh, you uh, means all the recordings are available i think i can go and revise all the things uh, these things uh, will be used uh, in rich when you talk about the, uh, this uh, statistics and all later on yes sir i know about that but uh, i recently uh, written the uh, expectation formula with v into that function so that's why i got confused okay like here we are not multiplying by v yeah okay yeah okay fine let's move forward now okay now uh, we want to extend this uniform random variable this is uh, this was a one dimensional random variable which was only related with the over the interval you have this is if you recall this closed interval ab so what will be the extension of this on the two dimensional case so in the two dimensional case that uh, you have a certain reason okay if you talk about the continuous case because this is a continuous case only okay x is a continuous random variable here any form random variable is continuous okay so so you have a reason which is covered by this xy plane so x is a one random variable y is another random variable so and now you you can draw this this is a reason so this is a part of the reason r1 is a part of reason this r so if you recall uh, uh, the double integral okay if you recall the double integral from your calculus part this double integral da okay over r will define the area over the reason okay so this is nothing but the area of r right if you look look at back in the vector calculus or a multiple integral calculus okay so that is actually identifies the area of the reason r so earlier we were having on the one dimension so on the x you have you are only dividing the means you have the length of the interval now can you relate now 
okay what will be the uh, uh, what will be the uh, uh, what will be the possible generalization of uh, this over uniform and for uh, two dimensional one case so in the integral which you have mentioned in black color it would be over the region r1 right then we would divide it by the a. this is a one this is one this is equals to one huh. okay okay huh. now can you uh, now can you give me over the two dimensional what will be the my possible way of defining the uniform random variable Yes, what will be the possible extension or natural extension, you can say. Sorry, one over x2 hmm? minus x1 multiply by y2 minus y1. The limits where the region limits. No, you are talking about a, uh, 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 you are talking about a only rectangular region. Sir, it will be the integral so integral you are x2 is... minus x1 into y2 minus y1 what will be that that's the area of that rectangle x1 cross x1 to y1 and uh, cross uh, y x2 upon uh, y2 sir ah. will it be the integral of the cdf uh cdf in CDF. terms of the two random, random variables over the and uh, over the region where which we are considering this one also integral of the cdf 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 yes. what is cdf i am trying to identify the pdf i am trying to identify the pdf probability density function so that uniformity will be mentioned okay what do you understood by uniformity Here, so one upon the length of the interval. For each one over the area of interval. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. The so you have given. Uh, see, uh, the one person has spoken, and he rightly mentioned one upon x two minus x one into y two minus y one. Why? Because that if it was correct, if it is. You are considering only a rectangular region, okay? If you have the rectangular region, x1 to y1, and you have uh, some x2 to y2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the rectangular region. So if you're talking about that, uh, uh, wait a minute, x1 uh, to here is x2 and uh, y1 to y2. So if you recall that, that's what he, what was he said is x2 minus x1 into uh, y2 minus y1. Because it's a very simple geometry to handle. It. So that's why people look into this first. Then they will try to generalize to any uh, regularized region. So this x2 minus x1 is nothing but the length and breadth of this rectangle. And what is that? This product is nothing but the area of that region. So, but everywhere the shape cannot be a rectangular region, could be any region. So, it is perfect to identify the uh, two-dimensional one is one upon area of R. And if we do agree with this, what is the possible extension of uh, this in the three-dimensional case? Then it will be volume of that region. Yeah. So, because if you uh, go and uh, check that uh that uh, how uh, if, if you check the in your integral calculus okay there uh, if you try to talk about the area of the region how it, it has been approximated by using the 
rectangular region right subdividing by uh, you have horizontal line and vertical lines and you are creating a rectangles meshes and you are just uh, using that uh, riemann integral and uh, all those stuff and uh, then you are approximating then put in the summation and then in the limiting case it is converging to the double integral r and when you talk about the volume means like in the three dimensional you will talk the volume then you it will instead of a rectangle you have a cuboid right cube you can say okay and so okay so it is perfect to identify in the two dimension is one upon area of r. so what is the probability of any part of this r1 now means r r is the full region r1 is a part of r so what can i say about the probability of this r1 can i say from something here straight forward what is the probability of r1 so i think it will be area of r1 divided by area of r and that is certainly less than equals to 1 because area of r1 is certainly less than equals to area of r okay so this is in the same line okay which we just now uh, followed for the uniform random variable over the interval now over the region now over the volume and so on uh, reason means the three di two dimensional and you have or the reason is two, three dimensional if you talk about volume and so on. So here it is the definition, the random vector. So as I told you, when you uh, make a pair of two random variables, it is named as random vector. It's said to have a uniform distribution over the 2D region R if its joint PDF is given by this. So it's now perfect to say this. Okay. And same thing can be extended to three dimensional, four dimensional, and so on. Okay, right. And in the above case, you have A is any part of the region R, and you have this is going to be area of A divided by area of R. Because fx of y, this this PDF, if you put down here, what is that? It's nothing but one upon area of R that is out constant. Okay, and double integral A dx dy may denote the area of the region. So this is also fine okay right now now here we try to understand when you have the rectangular region okay what is the nice property with it so suppose that x comma y is uniformly distributed this factor over the following rectangle r then x comma y are this this x and y this x and y are independent random variables so if they are uniformly distributed over the rectangular region, then they are nothing but independent random variable. And so that's a nice property. So how would you verify that these are independent random variables? If their uh, joint uh, PDF can be written as, can I write it as fx of x into fy of y? Yeah, can I do this? Yes, sir, in this case. In this case, yes, it is very straightforward, right? Because one upon A and into one upon B, obviously we are talking about A and B are non-zero. We are not talking about a point, we are talking about a rectangle. So A and B are non-zero we are using, and one upon A and into one upon B. So one upon A, X will follow the uniform distribution over the interval zero to A. So it's a uh, marginal uh, or it's uh, uh, PDF is nothing but the fx of x is equals to 1 by a whenever x lies between here and 0 otherwise. Similarly for y, fy of y is 1 upon b whenever y lies here and 0 otherwise. Okay, and certainly 1 upon a b you can write 1 upon a into 1 upon b. Okay. Right, and whenever x y will fall into this region, if you if you try to draw this region, okay, this is the region. Okay, you draw. You take any point. So it's going to be one upon a b, that area of the rectangle.
okay and it's non zero neither x is zero nor y is zero so 1 upon ab whenever here okay and here whenever you have otherwise okay whenever it is outside of this rectangle it is a zero okay because of the property so it can certainly can be written as the product of these two and you can certainly say x y are independent random variables you can also check Huh? Uh, sorry, sir. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, sir, I was just I just had a question that uh, here are we assuming that x x is a uniform random variable and y is a uniform random variable. Yes, we are assuming that they are jointly uniformly distributed. Okay, and we are also assuming that x and y are uniformly random variable. We are assuming those two things. Uh, okay. Okay. Sir. okay? Yes, side. So you can also uh, do by using the CDF, joint CDF, this way. Okay, okay. So this is going to be, and I think it is. It is come out. Uh, see, one thing. If you uh, try to identify from here, and if you try to identify f x of x from here to here, marginal a uh, CDF. Okay, it is going to be come out as x by a. Okay, and which is nothing but the PDF of sorry CDF of uniform randomness. So it is not necessary to assume that. So it is assumed that x y is uniformly distributed over the following rectangular region R. Then they automatically will come out as uniform random variables. Okay, so it's not not required to assume. If uh, if two random variable uniformly distributed random variables have a distribution which is not rectangular, then they would be dependent or they won't be independent. Can we say that? Uh, that uh, that I can't guarantee. Okay, it may be or it may not be. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So here is. Okay, you can you can uh, you can try this exercise out. Okay, probability that x less than equals to x, y less than equals to y, and you know what that is equal to be one upon a b is out, and you have the integration from zero to x and zero to y dy dx, and if you integrate this, is going to be x times y by a b. Can you work out this? If you have any doubt to reach this x times y by a b, you please raise your hand, which will tell me. Yeah, it's very uh, very straightforward, right? Now, uh, can you also verify that this f x of x? It's written. All the steps are written here. Can you uh, verify all the steps are correct here? That marginal density, uh, marginal C D F. Yes, sir. So uh, similarly, you can also verify that this f y of y is equals to y upon b. So you have uh, from here above and here discussion. You have this is f x y of x comma y is equals to f x of x into f y of y. So this also identifies that both x and y are independent, and you know. For the continuous random variable, you know, f x derivative will define the small f. Okay, PDF. So one by a. So this is true for x zero less than equals to x less than equals to a. Okay, and zero otherwise. So you you all you are working here with here everything is work out 
here is a uh, zero less than equals to x less than equals to a and zero less than equals to y less than equals to b so keep in that mind so when you differentiate you have the fx derivative is 1 by a over the interval 0 to a otherwise 0 similarly for fy dash is 0 1 by b 0 to b whenever y lies between here so what uh, so that pdf is nothing but the pdf for the uniform random variables over the interval 0 to a and 0 to b respectively so that will automatically come out if you come if you take the two dimensional uniform distributed random variable over the reason a uh, rectangular reason it will be automatically come out that they are individually they are uniformly distributed and they are independent okay right fine now now it's it's a very important uh, random variable which you will uh, see uh, when you go for the some uh, advanced topics okay and uh, this is actually uh, uh, given by de morvi okay when he was uh, doing some experiment with respect to the binomial random variable And what he found is when n is going large, and if you are he's plotting, means if you if you if he's keep on performing the Bernoulli trials, okay. And if you try to fit out fit the curve through the okay through the uh, given uh, 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 through the uh, output, okay. Uh, what are the points he is noting down it is going to be smoother and it is going to be bell shaped curve okay i have that picture i will also show you okay and uh, later on you will see at the end also central limit theorem will tell you okay that if you go for n large okay some any any type of random variable they will actually converge to that the curve will converge to the normal normal random variable okay so it is very important with respect to the research perspective okay let us see further i mean it's like uh, what we can do more about it okay? right so uh, let's uh, first uh, let me give you the definition okay then we will see that plot okay right so a random variable x is said to be normally distributed with following parameters okay one parameter is mu and another parameter is sigma square okay so these are essentially nothing but they are turned out to be as mean and variance respectively for this random value and we write x follows normal distribution with mu comma so these two parameters has been mentioned here if its PDF is following. Now, if mu equals to 0 and sigma equals to 1, it is easy to uh, take. Okay. So if you uh, have uh, this, let's say mu equals to 0 and sigma equals to 1, then you have fx of x is equals to 1 upon square root of 2 pi and e to the power minus x square by 2. And I think you are very much familiar with this uh, function. Where it is appearing? Can you tell? This function, did you see anywhere? So in the question distribution of the velocities of a uh, ideal distribution. Yes. Okay. Anywhere else? Have you ever worked out with error function?
okay if you integrate this suppose so what is the challenge now okay let's see so 1 upon root 2 pi is coming out because to satisfy the normality condition okay because it's going to be a pdf for an uh, uh, a normal random variable with mean is 0 and variance is 1 okay so this 1 by root 2 pi is a weighting factor and now if you integrate this e to the power minus x square by 2 the analytical expression is not possible okay this integration cannot be solved analytically so certainly you require approximation so here you have to take the approximation like trapezoidal rule simpson's rule and so on we will come into the picture okay those who have uh, those you have uh, learned during your i think numerical course okay so this is a challenge here e to the power minus x square by 2 this is expression okay and whenever either x goes to infinity or x goes to minus infinity this tends to zero okay so it is a well defined function so there is no problem in that okay right okay so here is the plot what the de Morvis observed you can see he has uh, performed the 10 random experiment and uh, uh, he has plot the chance uh, that uh, how uh, how many success he has got okay right so this is uh, i think a 0 to 10 10 times he uh, tossed the coin okay so this uh, uh, this uh, i think uh, mass function of a binomial random variable because okay as n becomes larger than n so probability of success here is fixed 0.7 so p is fixed 0.7 okay now so the, the means like uh, this is this is the curve which is uh, this is the curve which is passing through this uh, points point 7 is the probability of success right so if you if you recall the uh, binomial random variable what is the, what is the probability mass function so x equals to i is equals to okay t of x equals to i is equals to n c i okay p to the power i time 1 minus p to the power uh, n minus i right it was there so p is 0 0.7 okay and 1 minus p is uh, right 0 0.3 okay so here is see when so he has plot for nc0 nc1 nc2 nc3 nc4 and so on. these all these things are probability mass function is plotted here when you take n equals to 10 so when he is take n equals to 20 he has plotted all the data okay and for n equals to 30 he is the uh, so for different values of n equals to 10 n equals to 20 n equals to 30 and n equals to 50 he has plotted the probability mass function the values approximate values now you can see as the n increases they are going much dense okay much closer right here many of them are lies here right when you have 50 and if you try to fit the curve here uh, previously it is coming like here but afterwards it's like and then it is going down similarly here okay so if you increase more and it will be more smooth okay and if you go back and plot this you i think you are comfortable in matlab and you can plot this e to the power minus x square by 2 okay very easily okay and you can see that is going to be a bell-shaped curve and it's going to be symmetric about the zero x equals to zero and if you work out with x equals to mu so if you look at here okay so x equals to mu so what is what is happening at x equals to mu here so this is one 
and you can see that maximum height what it will be maximum height is 1 upon square root of 2 pi sigma which will be occurring at x equals to mu that you can also prove okay that will have a maximum at x equals to mu okay and this is going to be symmetric about the line x equals to mu so if you put mu equals to 0 you are symmetric about the line y axis okay right we will i uh, will talk more about this more detail okay right now so let's try to first verify that that mean of this uh, normal random variable is mu and variance is sigma square and fx of x is here so here what i will try to show is what you can show is expectation of x minus mu is zero if i show this this implies expectation of x equals to mu okay i will try to show this expectation of x minus mu is zero and because expectation is linear i can use that fact and I can prove that expectation of x is mu. So why I have chosen this x minus mu here is because of this x minus mu is sitting in the argument. Okay. So because we have to deal uh, deal with the integral, okay, which is very complicated. Okay. So if you uh, so you if you write down expectation of x minus mu, what is that x minus mu time fx of x. So what is fx of x is 1 upon root 2 pi sigma time exponential of minus 1 by 2 x minus mu by sigma whole square dx. Now. Now you know how to solve this, this type of integral is we have to use the substitution method. So what is the first substitution we will make is x minus mu by sigma we will substitute by y. Okay and then try to see what will be the change. Okay now first thing is upper limit and more lower limit. So whenever x is minus infinity y is minus infinity and x is plus infinity y is plus infinity right. It will not change anything because x by sigma minus mu by sigma and uh, negative of some minus infinity is again if you are adding something else again minus infinity and by you mu by sigma will not make much difference to infinity infinity minus mu by sigma is infinity okay now dy so dx also should be replaced from here dx is sigma time dy okay or dy is dx by sigma so this sigma can be taken here dx by sigma and can be replaced by dy now x minus mu by sigma is y okay so this is e to the power minus y square by 2 now x minus mu what is x minus mu from here sigma y so this is a sigma y and this sigma is already adjusted here dx by sigma is dy 1 upon root 2 pi. Okay. Now sigma is coming out sigma by square root of 2 pi integration minus infinity to infinity y time e to the power minus y square by 2 dy. Now see y square by 2 derivative is y dy. Okay, now this integral is easy to solve. Okay, so if this integral, so, so substitute y square by 2 is z. So from here y dy is dz. Okay, and you can now this integral is transformed into what? You have uh, this is sigma square root of 2 pi time integration. So y square by 2 is z. So, uh, how will you change the limit? So, 
so uh, what we can do is here is so this is a okay this is a uh, derivative right you know okay so you have uh, this is uh, you have this is you can uh, what you can do is here is a improper integral right so you break it down minus infinity to zero and zero to infinity okay so you break it down minus infinity to zero plus zero to infinity okay otherwise it will not be possible first thing okay now this is it uh, this is a e to the power minus y square by 2 so now you can use that fact improper integral okay you have you are uh, aware about this right so if i uh, okay i will write some few steps so sigma by square root of 2 pi uh, limit uh, t tends to minus infinity integration uh, you have uh, let's take instead of t tends to uh, minus infinity so t to 0 you have e to the power minus uh, wait a minute uh, we have this is going to be uh, uh, what is that is uh, you have a y time e to the power minus y square by 2 dy plus limit sum you have this is x tends to infinity integration 0 to x y time e to the power minus uh, y square by 2 dy okay now you apply this uh, uh, this improper integral property so sigma by root 2 pi limit t tends to a minus infinity and you know this is anti derivative of this is nothing but e to the power minus y square by 2 right this integration and t to 0 plus limit x tends to infinity and you have this is going to be you have e to the power minus y square by 2 0 to x and now you this sigma by square root of 2 pi now this is going to be a uh, limit e tends to minus infinity 1 minus e to the power minus t square by 2 plus limit x tends to infinity e to the power minus x square by 2 minus 1 and now if you apply the limit limit t tends to minus infinity e to the power minus t square by 2 tends to 0 limit x tends to infinity e to the power minus x square by 2 is also 0 1 minus 1 is 0 so it's going to be turn out to be 0 okay right so uh, this is what about the mean okay for the variance okay so for the variance here you can use the fact so variance of x what is the definition expectation of x minus mu whole square okay is equals to sigma square so you use this fact because of x minus mu is sitting inside so you know uh, okay then you can handle this okay right so here is this i'm just giving you uh, uh, some the important point here's so expectation of x minus mu whole square so one upon square root of two pi sigmas time this this is a x minus mu whole square time fx of x okay so 1 by root 2 pi sigma is out now again you will use the same substitution x minus mu by sigma is y so this x minus mu whole square is nothing but sigma time y whole square okay and dx by sigma will be dy so sigma square is here and y square is here okay now to establish that this is equals to sigma square what you have to do is you have to use here product rule for integration of y square time y, y to the e to the power minus y square by 2 dy it is not easy to do directly okay because y square is sitting here so you take y time y into e to the power minus y square by 2 because you know you can integrate this okay so when you do so so this is going to be can be written as follows and then you can and also you can use this fact 1 upon square root of 2 pi integration minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus x square by 2 dx is 1. Okay, so use the product rule 
to establish the final answer is sigma square. Okay, so the proof will be in the same line. Okay, so try to do that. Okay, if it is not done, let me know. I will uh, again. I will. I will supply the notes in that case. Okay, right. I think we can close now. If you have any question, you can ask. Okay, thank you.